In this video, I'm going to continue to talk about the Java Collections Framework, and specifically we're going to go over the map interface. Now the map interface gives you several um, uh, types of maps you can work with, and in this video we're going to talk a little bit about hash map, and I'm going to give you some background about what a map is. So if you consult uh, Wikipedia, the, the map um, you're going to see if you look in a list of data structures you're not going to find anything called a map you're going to find something called associative array and associative array is uh, synonymous with map uh, dictionary so in different languages people call them different things but essentially this is an abstract data type where you have a key and you have a value and you're going to be able to insert things with a key and then put a value that corresponds to that key and then later look up based on the key and get the value back out. So you can think of this just as a very simple key value store where you store stuff indexed by the key and the key is is what you need to access things back again. So and you could also think of this as kind of an array where instead of using integer index positions you instead are using whatever you want as your index. Um, so let's just jump right into the code. Um, the map interface, it's just map java.util, and you'll have two generic arguments in here. And so the first one, um, that's going to be the key, and the second one's going to be the value. So inside of these angle brackets, you have to put two classes, key then value. Uh, for this example, I'm just going to do strings because it'll be pretty straightforward and, and easy to talk about that way. So string as the key and string as the value. All right, uh, so we'll say map equals new, and then of course you cannot do map because map is just an interface, and we are going to have to do some kind of a concrete implementation. So we're going to do hash map, which is probably the most commonly used map in Java. So we'll say hash map, and Again, this is uh, the shorthand where you don't have to specify the classes inside of your angle brackets, so we're going to skip that and just rely on our map here to do that. <clears throat> All right, so there are three operations that you're probably going to use mostly. It's put, get, and remove. And put is how you put things into the map. So we'll say map.put, and we can say um, for a zip code, Four five two uh, one five, and we'll say uh, for the value, we can say um, that is somewhere around blue ash, and we can do another one. Uh, we can say put four five two zero oh, two, and we will say that is the business district. So you can see I've got some associative data. I've got a zip code as my key, and then I've got the value as what part of town that key is. Um, and if we wanted to look at uh, what this actually looks like, we can just do syso, and we can call it on the map. Let's see if we can print this out here. Run as a Java application. Right, so we've got key value, key value. Uh, hash map has a nice two string on it that gives you this uh, key and value printed out. So they're they're all going to call two string, and as everything's a string, it's going to be um, uh, it's going to be easy to read. So now, how do we get this data back out? Well, it's just as simple as you would probably imagine. Um, I'm going to skip a line here, and we'll just say map dot get and so the method signature of this is get and you pass the key in. Now obviously the key can be anything but in this case it's a string so we're going to pass a string in here. As long as the key is an object though your map interface can be satisfied. So as long as you put objects in your key and your value it's satisfied. So we're going to pass in the string of 45215 and what we should expect to get back out is the value that corresponds to this key. Uh, let's go ahead and run this program again. Right, so we got blue ash back out. That makes a lot of sense, and that's working exactly as we would expect. So we'll put, we'll do another put. I'll say put, um, whoops, we'll do put 
and I'm just gonna make a zip code up because I don't know that many other zip codes. I think this is probably somewhere in New York and we'll say um, this is Times Square. Um, and then I'm going to remove an element too. So I'll say map.remove and I will remove uh, 45202. Okay. And at this point, we will have added two keys, uh, re, um, put another key, so we'd have three, and then we'll remove a key. And through, throughout here, I'm going to print out how many are in this. So we can say um, size, and you can say map dot size, and that'll give you the size of the map. And we'll see when we change the map, we'll see what the size says here. Right, so we added one, we got a size three, we removed one, we got a size two. Um, let's comment this code out, and I'm going to show you the next thing, which makes the uh, map part of the collections framework, is that we can iterate over the key set. And the key set is nice because it just gives us a set of all the keys, and then we can use that to loop over. So we can say for string uh, key in map dot key set, and you'll see it'll return a set of strings. And when we pass this into a loop, it'll be an, it'll be uh, something that we can iterate right over. So we'll call it key set, and then I can say. I am looping over key equals key, right? So I've got these keys. And then if I wanted to get the value, I could just say map.getKey. And I'll be able to get that value for that key again. And let's uh, let's throw in a new line here, and I'll throw in a new line here. All right. So you can see I pulled the values back out by the key, and this is very useful for all kinds of problem solving techniques. Um, the one thing I'm going to show you guys next is we're going to find every occurrence of every of a word of um, every word and we're gonna count them in a big paragraph. And we'll use the keys as the words and then the value as the number of times we find the word. And there's no other super easy way to do this than using a map. So there, this kind of thing is perfect for a map. Um, and then in the other videos, we'll also show exactly how under the hood a hash map works and why it's fast to look things up by this key once you, um, once you have the hash code set for the object you're using as your key. Alright, thanks for watching and we'll keep picking this up in the next video.